No. Hello, hello, Tor. Can you hear me? Yep. Good you afternoon. Must, good afternoon. You must be a little busy right now with another eruption at your hands. Yeah, it's been a, a busy 24 hour plus um, indeed. And uh, uh, the number of interesting things that, that, that actually happened in this eruption did not come as a surprise. We were sort of expecting it. The uh, the accumulated magma volume in the shallow storage zone under Schwarzenke had reached the you know sort of the critical level of uh, ten, just over ten million cubic meters of magma, and that's. And uh, sorry about that. There was a, a little disturbance here. It was phoned. That's okay. Don't worry. I have no idea why it did that, but it did. Uh, yeah. So this uh, the system was primed. It 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 had actually reached sort of a uh, this level of 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 uh, of, of critical volume, and and um, we had this sort of a little event on on. Uh, uh, Second of March, I believe it was, where the, you know, there was a kind of a failed intrusion and uh, yes. it didn't quite reach the, the surface. Um, it sort of uh, took its time to build up back to about just over 10 million cubic meters of magma. And um, when it got to that point, it, it uh, took off uh, and uh, produced an eruption. And the eruption, uh, uh, was rather unsurprising in terms of behavior as well. And uh, uh, so there's a number of key things though. Number one, the precursor to this eruption was very, very short. Mm. So the, the seismologists are baffled at the moment. And, uh, but I think that has to, a lot to do with the fact that this magma has been coming up more or less the same path. So the same sort of a conduit. And uh, with the exception of the, the 14th of January, all of these eruptions have started on the same segment of the Sundnuku lineament, yes. just south of Stora Skogsfeld. And then you, you have sort of, a, when that starts, you have a fanning of the opening going to the south and the north, uh, which has ended usually being in, in, in a total length of fissure between three and four kilometers with, with fountaining along those things. So the way I see this is that the magma is coming up more or less sort of uh, directly up from underneath Sarchenki up through this uh, uh, conduit or, or, or plumbing system uh, um, that opens up the just southeast of Storos Kogsfet. And then the lengthening of the of the fissure is, is, is a rather shallow, superficial kind of element to the whole thing. It, it's not like you have a complete dike all the way down, which is which is that length. And I, I don't think so either, no. And so then this is this is where I, I see it. And it's kind of interesting that it's always happened in the same place. So you're re reusing the same pathway up. And if you're reusing it, you're also lubricating it, which might explain why the precursor is shorter and shorter for okay. each eruption. That's that that that's interesting. So in terms of duration, uh, do we need to expect that this will take much longer than the other three Sundnuka eruptions? No, I think I think it, it, it in terms of behavior it did the same thing. So you you had increase in magma discharge, the lengthening of the fissure it reaching a peak sort of a, somewhere between two and four hours after it started, then it starts to dwindle. So the okay. case just starts to drop and it dropped fairly fast. And uh, last night it was, it, it, you know, the activity was confined to vents on the, on the southernmost end of, of this lineament or of the, the fissure that opened up actually. And uh, uh, that was producing some loud flow, but more or less all the active flow fronts had stagnated by that time. And it seemed like the lava flow activity was more or less confined to the uh, already established 
flow field. Yes, I, I'm just bringing it up here just for a little bit of uh, visualization. I mean, mm -hmm. the camera here is very zoomed in. It's just a very small number of, uh, I guess, individual vents, if you want to call them that. Uh, but yesterday it was a lot longer. So and, yeah, this uh, is a very short, and and you see the intensity of the, this is just the, uh, you know, lava fountains which are maybe ten, five to ten meters high or something like that. That might extend, you know, extend to maybe twenty meters at best. And these are on the southern end of the the fissure that opened up yesterday. So it is on on your diagram to the. Bottom right there, it would be right, yeah, right. But the, you have the arrows, so roughly uh, in that uh, area. approximately there, yes, yeah. exactly. So, but the opening is actually, you see, where you have that. Uh, um, what does it say? I can say something, sorry, but a bit further up. Uh, you go along, keep on going, keep on going, keep on right there. That's where, where all of these uh, eruptions started on that little part of the of the uh, of the volcanic fissure. So that's where the openings are, have always been, and, then and that's where the main pathway is likely located. Yes, it seems like, and 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 then it sort of flares to the south and the north. Very good. Now, uh, uh, this eruption has a slightly different surface surface outcome because it seems that some of the lava was migrating down here towards the bay next to Grindavik Bay, uh, but it has not reached the sea, and the lava is not moving anymore or moving extremely slowly now. Do you think there's a chance for lava making it all the way to the ocean? Not unless you have, uh, uh, well, it is possible, but only if this activity on at this vent continues as it is right now and, and maintains that sort of activity. And you see off the transport system, so that actually becomes insulated, then you could start to see, you know, reactivation of that flow front and 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 uh, a further growth of the lava and it might then reach the sea uh, but a more likely scenario is that this activity will continue to dwindle and the, and and uh, the lava active flow of lava will be confined to the upper reaches of the flow field as it is right now that's now my it, yeah the other interest there was a branch of lava that went directly to the west in, and across the Grindavik road uh, not there, further up. Oh, so, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It came from. It came from, that. That came from the northern part of the active issue. And, yes, I see. And it uh, uh, the, the length of both lava branches is roughly the same. So it looks like you know they they have now reached the critical length uh, compared to the you know the the magma is just that 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 was active uh, yesterday when 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 it reached that critical length and since then the magma gestures has dropped below that that level of productivity so it kind of in my view unless you do some uh, major changes in the transport system and and insulate it completely that i think it's unlikely that we're going to see any further advance of the, of, of the lava it might thicken, but it, it's not going to... Yes, it might inflate further. I see what you mean. Okay. Now, in terms of societal consequences, there's, of course, one major issue. If the lava moves towards the coast, then it would actually cut off the coastal road, which I assume is this road here, yeah, the yeah, white line yeah. here. Uh, it's cut the 43 road, the main one that connects uh, Brindavik with Keflavik and Reykjavik uh, and, the, and the Round Peninsula Road. But then the southern coast road is still open and it's not affected. But if that was cut as well with lava, then it would be a little more difficult because then the both of the main roads would actually be truncated and uh, that would yes, make it a little challenging, wouldn't it? Yeah, and there was some movement on fissures on the on the west side of Grindavik. Uh, so with the uh, uh, what is called the Nes road, which is the continuation of the, the southern coast road to, towards Reykjanes. That's yeah. actually quite difficult to drive this on. This one here, road. exactly. Yeah. That's not a main road, so this is a very challenging. It also adds a lot of, you know, time to 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 anyone who wants to make yeah, a journey. Yeah, you have to and, kind of, and, and it's 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 limiting, definitely becoming a limiting factor. And and so, 
it is good that the lava did not go over the, the South Coast Road. Yes, I was worried about this yesterday. It, uh, it looked a bit that it might actually do this, but then it, it calmed down a little. So, okay, good. Then I think that's the key issues for now. Uh, is there anything else you feel we need to be seriously concerned about? Or um, if you're right, then, uh, and I hope you are, then uh, this will peter out over the next two, three days, I assume, and uh, be another short eruption of the Sundnukar system. But uh, is there anything else we, we, we might need to be concerned about? Uh, the thing is that what we've seen from uh, uh, December today is that the inflow of magma into the shallow magma storage zone, they have, of course, from the deeper one, um, has been uh, dropping. It was dropped uh, by half since December. So in December, it was right around eight cubic meters per second. And now it is about four. Okay. And, and if it continues to drop at the same rate, which is an assumption, of course, it depends on that assumption, then it, the inflow would uh, drop below sort of two to three cubic meters per second in a one to two months. And if that happens, then theory tells us that uh, uh, it's difficult to maintain flow through a dike uh, uh, when it is much low, uh, if it drops below those values of two to th three cubic meters per second. So sort of a logical sort of deduction from this is that the eruption could be, or this unrest on the Sundnukur lineament could come to an end within one or two months. Okay. Now, that's one uh, uh, scenario. The other scenario is that even though we've had this reduction in, in, in magma input into the shallower storage zone uh, uh, over since December, maybe it has reached some kind of uh, equilibrium now and it will stay at four. Okay. We miss per second. That means that there's gonna be an equilibrium between magma delivered uh, uh, from the deeper uh, storage zone to the shallower storage zone and then potentially towards the surface. So we would maybe get then uh, a continuous eruption and this eruption would, would continue and we would start to see possibly some change in magma composition if there is a difference between the magma that are in the shallow storage zone versus the deeper one. And uh, uh, so, you, you know, we would then establish direct connection to the deeper one and we could get a much longer eruption, similar to maybe what we saw at Kelnica Um So that that that's another possibility. I think that is a, a less likely scenario than one I mentioned before. But these are the two sort of uh, 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 scenarios that we are considering at the moment. And uh, time will tell. I mean, if the activity continues to drop down at the currently active fissure segment uh, and ends within the next two or three days, then scenario one is the more likely explanation. But if this activity continues for the next week or so, then scenario two is probably the more likely. I see, I see. Good. And in the long term, um, what's your gut feeling about um, the uh, the eruptions there? Do you think we will see more eruptions at other old centers or do you think uh, there's a chance that it actually might come to an end in in a few months i think the new liniment might come to an end in a couple of months we may get one more eruption if the inflow starts to keep continues to decline uh, uh, over the next few weeks then it would take longer for the shallow magma storage zone to reach its critical levels so we would then expect maybe the next uh, uh, critical moment with potential eruption, sort of uh, five to eight weeks from now, uh -huh. maybe a little longer. Uh, and then it would most likely sort of uh, quietly die out. Uh, but even if the activity stops on the Sundjugu liniment, it does not mean that the Reykjanes Peninsula is done. Exactly. That's going to continue for the, the next three, four hundred years with episodes of volcanic activity. And uh, we might get a pause. It might, you know, if, if this dies down in the next two months, we might get a pause for maybe a year, two, 
or even decade, uh, 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 then the actor will resume somewhere else. But uh, we don't really know how that will unfold in detail, so we just have to wait and see. Yes, we have to wait and see, which is, of course, the big issue for the people of Grindavik, because it sounds awful, but in a way it might be almost better if things would happen swiftly and then a decisive uh, change in situation would tell us, OK, we, we'll leave Grindavik B. It's not a good place to live. But if we get large breaks, people might come back, repopulate it, and then it might reoccur. Well, I, I think Grindavik will survive this, but whether it will be you know, uh, uh, people with kids returning there in the next few months or next few years, it might be a big issue. Yes. That, 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 there's a large question mark over that, but uh, the, the harbor is very important. It's a short distance to the fishing grounds from Green Day, so the, it's a very valuable harbor, and, and that's going to continue operating even if people live in communities that are further away and, and, yes. and drive in. It might become a, a fishing kind of station rather than a settlement in the classic sense where the main activity is actually the, the fishing industry. And, uh, rather and that, than that's living definitely there. a possibility, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tor, thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll be in touch. So hopefully you will uh, be right, proven right that everything will calm down now and that Grindavik will be spared again right now. Crossed for fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, mate.